Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at the latest update to Adobe Photoshop CC that now allows you to create web graphics automatically from your layered files. The feature is called Photoshop Generator. And what Generator will do is basically once you turn it on, it'll continue to monitor your file that you're working on, uh, update with any changes you make, and based on the uh, names that you apply to your layers, it will generate uh, web graphics automatically based on those names. So let's take a look. Now the web design process for many people usually starts in products like Photoshop and Illustrator where they go in and basically design what they want the website to look like. So here I am in Photoshop. Uh, this is pretty much the way a web page would look um, if it were designed in Photoshop, of course, complete with all the layers uh, that would make up this file, all the layers, layer sets, fonts, so forth and so on. And once this is approved by the client, in other words, they would do this work in Photoshop, show it to the client. And once the client buys off on it, then that's when the real work begins. Because what would have to happen is, painstakingly, you'd have to either slice up every single um, layer or object in this photo or in this um, Photoshop file. You'd have to either select all the layers individually and try and output them that way. And it would just be a huge pain. And I can't imagine what day-to-day -day web designers go through to make this happen. So let's take a look at how Generator works. The first thing is you have to turn it on in Photoshop CC. So uh, if you go check your Photoshop CC updates, uh, you'll, if you haven't already got the update, there'll be an update waiting for you. Also, if it's not there, just simply quit the Creative Cloud app, uh, desktop app, relaunch it, and then it should go out and check right then and there to see if there's a Photoshop update. I'm gonna hit the preferences just by hitting Command K on my keyboard on Windows, that would be Control K. And now I'm going to head over to the plugins section for uh, the Photoshop preferences. When I click on plugins, there is now a new enable generator. And when I enable generator, that turns it on in Photoshop. So it's a two-step process. Once it's turned on in Photoshop, there's one more place you have to turn it on. And that is you have to turn it on in the actual file you're working on. So it's a file by file basis, because of course, you may not want web graphics for every single Photoshop file you do. More than likely, unless you're doing web design on a regular basis, you probably want it less often than you do. Um, so in this case, uh, I do want it for this particular file, and I would choose file, the new command generate, and turn on image assets. Once I click on this, there will be a checkbox by it. I'm not gonna click on it just yet because I wanna show you behind the scenes what's going on. So I'm gonna go back to my finder. I'm gonna to go to the folder where I got this original PSD. So here's the PSD that I'm working on. Now there is a uh, assets folder here that's been generated from the last time I, I tried this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that folder. I just send it to the trash. So now basically what I've got going on is the file and that's it. I've got some other folders with other things in it we'll talk about in a moment, but that's pretty much what's going on. Now there is, um, uh, let's, let's go head back to Photoshop and let's take a look at how this works. So I'm gonna go to the file menu, generate, image assets. So I basically enabled it. If I go back and look now, it should have a checkbox by it. Now if we head to the finder, there, is, there should be a folder that it generates and there it is, the folder just popped in. And now what it's doing is it's creating all of those assets automatically for me. So it not only created the folder, but it started populating it. Now, how does it know what to do? Well, if we head over to the layers panel, you can see that, of course, you can name your layers anything you want. But in this case, I've started naming the layers with file extensions. So .png, .gif, .jpg, of course, the most common web formats. Once you enable a layer with a name, then it begins to generate the assets for that layer automatically in the background. So let's go back to the finder and take a look at that folder one more time. And we're gonna find this layer, it's called, or this object, it's called circle BG1 for circle background one. So let's go ahead and take a look. And let's go to the assets folder. And if we look, there is a circle background one PNG that it made. Now, I'm just gonna keep that uh, handy just for a second. Let's go back here 
and let's scroll down to where that asset is. That asset is underneath the kayaking, so it's right here. Now I'm gonna, uh, just to show you for, just for fun, I'm gonna lock the transparency of that layer. We're gonna grab a brush with a red color, and we're just gonna go ahead and paint that layer red. So now that I've done that, without doing anything else, it's made it red. So I head back to the finder and it's already generated the new graphic that's red. If I come back to Photoshop and undo it, I head back to the finder, it's undone. It's already generated the, the back to the gray one. So that's what I mean by it constantly monitors what you're doing in that file and constantly generates the graphics for you. Now there's some hidden benefits to this. Let's unlock the transparency back, you know, once more. And what if I need a retina size graphic? I need one that's twice as big. So if I double click on the layer to name it, I can actually go in, put a comma in, and let's say I want this to one to be 200%. So once I do 200% and give it an, give it a different name, retina uh, circle BG1, BG1, Dot PNG. Now what I've told Photoshop to do is generate one that's 200% of the original size. And there it is, Retina BG1. Um, and of course, the original one, which isn't 200%, it's the actual size, so it's smaller. So that's how cool this is. It's just simply naming your layers. You can go in and have Photoshop generate the web graphics for you. I can even have it generate a different file type. So for example, if I go one step further and go to the end of that file name and I just want a circle um, bg1.jpg. So now I've told it to make a JPEG as well. And if I head back to the finder, uh, scroll down to the bottom where it would add it, there's the JPEG. So it's even making multiple file types, multiple sizes, multiple quality, multiple resolution, based on how I name my layers. And of course, I'm generating multiple files from just the one layer. And if you want to know about various options, uh, there are even tags that you can do. So for example, if I head over to my notes here, of course, we can do PNG, JPEG, and GIF. You can do a scaling by putting in a number. You can tell it what quality of PNG, what quality of JPEG you want, what percentage or size you want. And of course, here are some examples that you can pause the video and look at uh, just for, your, just for uh, your own benefit as you go forward using this feature. So generator is pretty hot. Now, once you've done this, you might want to go one step further. You'll also notice under the file menu that there is a generate edge reflow project. And that was one of my other folders that I had in the finder. So I had already done that where it enabled or generated an edge reflow project. So if you're working on responsive design, you can have um, Photoshop now have a direct link with edge reflow and that link is live. So it can be, it can be turned on and constantly updated or syncing back and forth. So as you're making changes in Photoshop, your edge reflow product or projects getting updated as well. And that is a huge workflow benefit for people that are going to be going in and doing their responsive design and edge reflow to generate the CSS for the various screen types that you're going to do. So that's it for this quick look at the new Photoshop generator in Photoshop CC. It's an update available to all Photoshop CC users. Um, it's again, part of your Creative Cloud membership. And that's the benefit of Creative Cloud is that you keep getting these feature updates as soon as they're available. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time.